This is the fourth video of the playlist, Ethics and Artificial Intelligence, Case Analysis. And we are finally going to talk about taking an action, like figuring out what action to take. All right, and this should look familiar. I mean, we start out with thinking about the fact pattern, what facts are relevant here, or what creates the context, what creates the moral importance of the situation. Then we have to think about the moral excuses as the rationalization analysis. Okay, so in this situation, what moral excuses are or could be showing up? The next step is a value analysis, thinking about uh, if one or more of our five values are involved in the situation. And then finally, uh, what we're doing now, thinking about the action analysis. So after you have all those steps of analysis, then, it's, then you can move on to the synthesis, uh, the final recommendation. Here's what you should do, putting all that stuff together, the synthesis. Uh, and, you know, of course, we often in life skip right to the synthesis. Um, and usually will be okay, but if you've gone through the steps of analysis, the synthesis is going to be much richer and much better. Well, maybe not much better, but richer, easier to defend, um, and uh, it's, it, it's going to help us be able to articulate to ourselves and others like what exactly is good or bad about this situation. Okay, so what's the problem here? There are two. The first is what I'm calling the problem of trade-offs. So in order to illustrate the problem of trade-offs, let's think about the difference between two examples. Example one, you're considering walking up to a stranger and pushing him to the ground for no reason. Just, you think it'd be kind of cool, so you just are just gonna go up to a random person and push him. Should you do that? Well, hopefully you don't need <laughs> very much instruction in ethics to realize that uh, there's a lot of reasons why that would be ethically bad to do, okay? Um, one reason it's so easy uh, in that situation to say like, no, you shouldn't do that, right? Don't do it, is because there are no trade-offs in the walking up to the stranger situation, right? It's just, it's bad and then there's really no good. I mean, I guess like the amount of enjoyment that you get from like seeing somebody in pain or like if that's your thing, um, I suppose that could count, but like, you know, it's, it's, there's not a real balance sheet situation. It's just a lot of negatives and no positives, okay? So there's no real trade-off, so that is not complicated. Ethically speaking, anybody should be able to get the right answer to that one. A more complicated one would be this. You, you are in, you're a legislature and you're considering passing a law that's going to harm one group economically, but there's another group that's going to benefit in terms of opportunity. That is a situation where there's trade-offs, and because there's trade-offs, it makes it sometimes very complicated to figure out what the right thing is to do, morally speaking. Um, and those trade-offs could be trade-offs between values, like this value is negatively affected, this value is positively affected, or between stakeholder groups or stakeholder people, like individual people. And both kinds of trade-offs are highlighted in that example, right? You would have to think about there's a difference between the, the happiness because someone's losing money and autonomy because other people are getting a chance to do things that they wouldn't have had to before, and there's two different groups. And so uh, if you want to do an ethical analysis of that situation, you would need to know the context. I need to give you much more details. And then you would have to start to think through, okay, what's the best thing to do here? Because it's not obvious. The first one is obvious, requires no, no special skills. The second one, because there's trade-offs, that makes it difficult. Okay. So we got the problem of trade-offs. There's a second huge problem, uh, the problem of rationalizations. Okay, so rationalizations, um, hopefully that, that video uh, was helpful. If not, please go back and watch that. That's in this playlist, thinking about the different moral excuses. The thing is, the tricky thing is, the moral excuses are not always wrong, such that you can't just say like, aha, Here's a couple of potential moral excuses, or I heard them say this, which is a moral excuse, therefore it's wrong and bad. All of the moral excuses, all those ones that we went over one by one, <laughs> actually are valid in certain situations. Like you can't just say that for all time it's wrong and bad. Um, so think about, for example, the, the one called materiality. Materiality, uh, we're using that word in the very specific way that lawyers use it where something's, uh, if something's material, that means it's a big deal, a big impact. If something's immaterial, that means it's you know, not, not such a big deal, it doesn't have a big impact. 
So, uh, you know, I had a period of my life where I parked only in two hour spaces. Uh, um, fortunately, I have other <laughs> arrangements now, but like for a while there, I would have to have two hour spaces. So I have to like move my, I leave work and like, you know, walk out of the building and move my car every two hours. Um, but there would be various situations. So, okay, so like the ethical thing to do is to move your car every two hours because the, the city has decided that like we need to have enough parking places and so that's got to happen. But there were times when I would be, for example, meeting with a student and the student would have just gotten on to an important topic. And, you know, if I was like being real strict about the parking thing, I would have been like, hey, you know what, this meeting's over, stop. Um, I've got to go move my car. But there were some times where I was like meeting with a student and, you know, I'd go a little bit over the two hours because I'd want to finish the meeting, okay? Um, technically, that was wrong because the sign specifically said you, gotta, you can only park here for two hours, but I parked there for two hours and six minutes. Uh, is that bad? I would say that, you know, it's, it's, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> I parked there every few extra minutes. It's not no big deal, right? Everybody does that. Um, now, that can be a moral excuse also. You can, if you want to think, well, that's not a big deal. Um, that can turn into something very bad, right? But in this situation, I'm, I, what I'm trying to describe now is that th all the rationalizations have, are justified in some circumstances. I would say that's a circumstance where I wanted to spend a few extra minutes with a student um, rather than like, you know, uh, running out to get under the two hour mark. Okay, so. That, that's really what we're doing in action analysis. We're, we're figuring out how to do value trade-offs, and then we're also figuring out which rationalizations actually made sense of the ones that we identified in the rationalization analysis. Take away these two problems, uh, and um, ethical reasoning is really easy. Uh, it's, it's, it's nothing to it, right? But with these problems, uh, ethics can be difficult. So. How do we address trade-offs? How, how do we figure out which rationalizations are justified in this particular circumstance and which are not? Those are the two big tasks for us. Uh, is there a rule or formula or can I even say algorithm that we could apply that would just tell us the right answer? Well, uh, of course not. <laughs> um, two plus two is equal four all the time in every context and every situation. But there's no formula that we can say, because every circumstance is a little bit different. Uh, we just can't have a moment where we say, like, OK, you know, I, I always know the answer to this, or this is 2 plus 2 is 4, so everybody knows that. That leads some people, some people's knee-jerk reaction to that is relativism, just saying, like, well, OK, if there's no objectively true answer, uh, then it must be that all answers are as good as any other answer. Um, I would push back on that. That's, that's, uh, that's some lazy thinking right there. In truth, a much better way to think about what we have is a continuum, right? There are, there are things, final recommendations, that are pretty much moral disasters. Then there are some that aren't that bad and some that are OK. But then there's always a best, right? There's, there's always a best thing to do. And ethical people are always trying to find that best thing to do. Okay, so just because there's not an objectively true answer like there is in math doesn't mean we give up the search for the best answer. All right, there's no formula, but there are some best practices. Uh, and there's four of them that I would like to go over um, in helping us think through the rationalizations and the trade-offs. The first is, see, look how cool this is. Looks like I can knock on the door for real. Um, thinking about situations as win-wins versus zero-sums. Okay, zero-sum is when there's a right and a wrong. Uh, a lot of sporting matches are zero-sum. There's a winner and there's a loser. Okay, and that's how we think of a lot of moral situations that we're in. Is like there's a thing that I can do that would be good and a thing that I could do that would be bad. Uh, I could. There's one thing that would help people. There's one thing that would hurt people. That's almost never the case. I mean, there are. We can think about these dramatically, dramatic moral situations where you know they are. There is a winner and there is a loser, and that's just like an absolute sense. But most situations in life are more subtle than that. 
So it takes creativity to figure out how to make multiple people win at once. And that can often be done, again, with creativity. If someone's cre creative and, and really wants to benefit different people ethically, um, then you can often find a way to do that. So win-win, creating win-win situations from zero-sum situations. All right, this one's even more fun, huh? <laughs> Got our two people over here. Uh, uh, I like logic. Uh, I'm trained as a philosopher. I took logic class. I like logic. Logic is the foundation of many things. But as a matter of fact, morally speaking, if you ever say to yourself, okay, so this is this, and that is that, and therefore, uh, you don't have a right to feel hurt about this. Um, that's not a very good way to do ethics. In fact, I would say that will get you into trouble. A much better way to do ethics is with empathy, <laughs> by always thinking about not logically how should someone be affected by this situation, but realistically what are likely their thoughts and experiences. And sometimes that requires a lot of listening. We'll talk about listening in a second, but um, the, the journey to the best action often goes through empathy. It very rarely goes through thinking about things in abstract logic terms. Impact over intent. Um, so intent is important. It just is, right? And uh, actually, I would say that in a lot of situations, people don't care enough about intent. So intent is something that's very important. Like, what do you intend to do something bad, or do you intend to do something good? That is an important moral question to, to know the answer to. But you can easily get too caught up in that. In fact, um, in a study, in a recent study, it was found that when I was judging uh, whether it was good or bad, when I was judging my own actions as good or bad, I focused on what I meant to do, the intention behind them. When I focused on whether what other people were doing are good or bad, I focused on the impact of what they were doing. Not so much the intention, I don't know what the intention was, who really cares, but I want to think about like what impact it had. Uh, what I want to say is that I think we should always be thinking about both, but especially impact. We, we, we often just hide, cover over our bad actions by thinking that, well, I wasn't trying to do something bad. I wasn't trying to hurt something, somebody. Um, so therefore, uh, my actions are fine because my intentions were good. Look, having good intentions is a very good thing, very important, uh, something that w is relevant and we want to know about. But at a certain level, you can't cover, cover over with a fig leaf of, of good intentions anymore. You have to think about what impact uh, your words and actions are having, what, what they're actually having, and then make adjustments accordingly. And finally, I'll go over in the middle here. Uh, dialogue is this almost like magic <laughs> feature of the human experience. Uh, Every time I think about it, I'm like, wow, I can't believe we can do that. Because not only can I have opinions about things, but I can think through my reasons for my opinions about things. Hang on, it gets weirder. Not only can I think through my own reasons for my opinions about something, but I can share those reasons with other people and try to persuade them that my opinions are correct. And it gets even weirder. I can open myself up to being persuaded by the reasons and opinions of other people. All of this only happens through dialogue. Okay? Dialogue is this magic part of the human experience. When people dialogue, things tend to go well. Uh, when we just make assumptions about um, the right thing to do or what people's intentions are, or etc., uh, that often does not go very well. Um, when we're covering things over with secrets, that also does not go well. Things are usually much better when they're out in the open, when we're talking about them, when we're exchanging reasons in an honest way together. Okay, so uh, that was the last step of our analysis. Um, what I want to do now is to give an example of how this could actually work and how this could actually help us think through a difficult situation. Um, but again, this action analysis is specifically focused on how do we make trade-offs when trade-offs need to be made, and then how do we figure out which rationalizations are justified in this case and which aren't. Uh, that 
that's why I went over those b four best practices because usually when you're keeping win-win um, in mind, usually when you're thinking about impact, usually when you're thinking about dialogue, usually when you're thinking about empathy, uh, you have a much better chance of coming up with, with the best action.